All right, how you, how you guys doing? My name's uh, James. I'm with uh, Marin Mechanical. Uh, we're the P PVI representatives uh, for these uh, water heaters. Uh, these water heaters are um, your quick draw uh, water heaters, basically using your boiler water going into a coil heat exchanger to heat up the water inside the uh, tank. Um, I'll go over um, everything with you guys. For starters, on the side, if you guys come closer, there's two switches here. These are your on-off switches. The first switch you see is going to be your power switch for the water heater in case there's uh, an issue where you need to shut off power to it, you could shut off it by the switch on the side. The other switch on the left is your alarm switch. That switch, if you you could shut off, that will shut off the the, the uh, alarm. On the, on uh, also the side panel, there's a uh, your lower to cut off uh, reset switch and test switch. Now. This is for if you have, if you open this up, there's a little green board in there with the little red uh, LED light. That's your lower to cutoff board. So you always want to make sure that that little red LED light is lit at all times. If you don't see it lit, that means that there's a lower to cutoff failure or something's going on or there's an alarm. You, you're gonna wanna try to press the lower to cutoff reset button in and hold it in for a second or two. And you should see the LED come out, come on again. If you don't see it come on again, then you know there's an issue with the uh, lower to cutoff. The other thing that possibly could go wrong that's also in the limits of the lower to cutoff is your high limit control. This has a manual reset too as well. There's a green uh, switch on top of this. If you could see it with my finger. If this ever trips, the only way to reset it is by pushing this green button in and you'll hear like a little click on it knowing that it reset. Now why, why would... Yeah, the first thing was the, low, the lower the cutoff. If you, if you don't see the uh, red LED light inside, that means uh, go to the side of the panel and there's a reset button on the side saying uh, ELWCO, reset. That's an electronic lower the cutoff. You're gonna wanna push that in for a second or two to get it reset. The other thing is that you want to make sure that the manual reset's not tripped. So inside the, this high limit is called the manual reset. You want to just make sure you want to push that green button in and make sure it's not tripped. It's set for 200 degrees. So if this ever if this ever failed to just kept running and running and running. At 200 degrees, it's gonna trip this uh, high limit control and it's gonna trip that button. And in turn, it's gonna also shut off the uh, red LED light because it's, it's in the limit controls. There's uh, an upper operating control in here Set for 165, right? Your normal set point is set for 145. So you have about 20 degrees above that. What you want to make sure is that anytime if you need to change your set point, First of all, you, you, you would hit set. This is your temp track control. This is what's controlling this, this valve right here. All right. You would click set 
once, set again till it's flashing, the yellow number, and then you could use the up and down arrow to change your set point, right? If you click set again, it locks it. So it's set twice to get into it. Up and down arrow to change the set point. And then uh, set again to lock it. When you do that, just match whatever that degrees on your upper operating control, this little dial right here. 20 degrees higher than your set point. All right. Now, if this ever goes into an alarm, it would only go into an alarm for a couple of reasons. One of them being if it can't make temperature, uh, it would go into an alarm, or if there's some type of issue with the cutoff or high limit, it would go into an alarm. Easiest thing to do is shut the power off to it and turn the power back on to clear the alarm. If that doesn't work, you would click set on the control. It would say RES, which meaning reset. And then you would click set, ag set again. And that should clear it. Um, also, if for whatever reason you see this doesn't have any power to it, you don't see any power inside, you don't see the LED light lit, this light over here, there's a little uh, LED light in the switch, there's a little fuse, 15 amp mini fuse, you guys might want to get spares of that. I don't have one, yeah, uh, but um, I could show you guys it, just so you know what to get. But you could actually, let me show you it. This way, you could see it. It's a little mini fuse. How many amps? 15 amps. It's a time delay fuse. And basically, you know, this is an emergency situation where if, uh, you know, you fuse blows for whatever reason, you try to replace it, you know, hopefully it works again, but it could blow again, you know, because it could be a short of something, yeah, but you, it, it, you should have spares of that. And you basically just push it in and twist like a quarter turn to the right to lock it in. There's also a transformer in here, a 24 volt transformer. Not too much in here, inside the control panel. See, right now it's calling to be heated up. This wall, this wall. Yeah. How reliable? They're pretty reliable. Reliable, right? Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't really have too many problems with this. So also to know if it's open or not, you see how we just shut it off and it closed? Went to zero. That's how we know it's closed. Because it's always gonna shut off closed. And then when it's opening up. This right here, this little flame signal uh, symbol means that it's calling for heat. See if I lower this temperature, 
down past the set point, it should close. See how it's closing? So whenever you see that little flame signal symbol, that little red flame sim symbol, you know that it's calling for heat. So that's gonna be that valve is gonna be open. Now you also have um, a relief valve here on the right side, right? Now it's open, right? Yeah, now it's open because you see it's at 90. So now you know for in the future at 90 it's it's, it's open. The uh, relief valve is a temperature and pressure relief valve. So basically at 150 PSI it's going to relieve pressure and also at 210 degrees Fahrenheit it's going to lift open and relieve pressure too. It should really never drip or relieve pressure. If there's something, that means that there's something wrong with your system, meaning that either there's, could be a, a number of different reasons. Possibly your expansion tank could be bad. Um, maybe it's not charged up enough. Maybe you have a fluctuation of your, your domestic uh, water pressure. So that should really never leak. If you do see it leaking, it's probably gonna need to be replaced. Um, we normally do, we tell you guys to flush out the heaters. Um, so we, we recommend that you guys flush it out every, every, few, every few months, meaning that um, you guys would do one individually. You guys would uh, shut off the heater by uh, shutting the switch off. You guys would isolate the heater by shutting that hot outlet valve off and shutting your inlet valve off, which is over here coming in. Put a heat exchanger. Opening up your drain valve on the bottom. Draining it down. What about when? Uh, you, you would open up the relief valve at this point to let to let air into the into it. It's not gonna leak after that. Sometimes it does leak. Sometimes it does leak, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't leak. You drain it all the way down. And once it's all the way drained down, you open up the uh, cold inlet valve a crack and with the drain open and let it flush out until you see clear water. And then uh, once that's done, you would uh, close the drain valve. Keep your relief valve uh, open while you're filling it back up. Once you get water out of the relief valve, I would uh, just shut the, the inlet valve off. Take your hand off the relief valve to let it seat itself again. And then slowly open the cold water inlet valve up to build pressure. Once it's fully built pressure, then you open up your hot outlet valve to the system again and turn your power switch back on. At that point, you might need to reset the lower to cut off on the side of the panel. What's up? When we fill it up that with the water. Yeah. Right. For what pressure we are looking for? 
whatever whatever pressure that you originally had in your system there should be a gauge on the side on the bottom so your pressure is about It's about 55 pounds, 55 pounds of pressure. So when you're filling it back up, it's, it's not gonna go, it shouldn't go past 55. You should wait till it gets to 55 and then open it back up. There's also a, 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 a pump on the side over here that is a blend pump. Yeah, circulating the water inside. It's supposed to help move around the water to, 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 clean, to clean everything. But I would still, you know, flush it out to clean it. Um, I, I see that... Um, your boiler water temperature. You always want a little bit higher than what you want to put out. So you're at 140 right now. It's not really going to get above 140. Your set point's at 145. So if you want 145, to the building, you're gonna have to bump up your 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 boiler water temperature. Yeah. So maybe I should lower the set point down to 140 then. Right? No one's here, right? Do you think you're gonna get more temperature of boiler water? Maybe well, one, maybe 150. Yeah. So maybe I'll leave it for now. But this is your inlet temperature. Right here, your temperature gauge. And over here is your, your outlet heating water supply gauge. Your, I mean, uh, your return, I'm sorry. On the tank, there's... Um, you have, it's a 400 gallon storage tank. Sorry. 400 to 300. 400 gallons. 400. Yeah. Let me see. No, no, 400. It says your, your tank warranty is 25 years. And um, I believe your, 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 your uh, coil. YouTube heat exchanger warranty is a three year warranty for the heat exchanger. But your actual tank warranty is 25 years. You guys have uh, any, any questions about this heater? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, stainless steel. They, they started doing it, it's called duplex stainless steel. Mm -hmm. The way they make it in the, in the factory, certain kind of, it's a certain kind of stainless steel that they use mm -hmm. to make it last so long. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty efficient uh, border heaters. You know, there's, there's not too much going on with them to fail, um, which is good. They're reliable. 
Um, I would just say, you know, make sure you do you do your cleanings on a, on a, on a regular basis, and, and and just you know, open up the panel and check everything inside. Make sure everything looks tight, all the wires and stuff. Make sure nothing's loose or, 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 or shorting, like sparking or anything. Um, the, the, uh, the red number on, on, on top, right? There's two different numbers. There's a red number and a yellow number. The red number is, uh, there's two sensors in a tank. The red number is a, the upper sensor. What, what, you're, what you're basically putting out higher up in the tank. Yellow number is uh, lower in the tank sensor. And that's basically your set point uh, sensor. So when you, when you, when you uh, do your set point, it's going off the bottom number. Um, you guys have electronic mixing valves. So that's good. I mean, that's doing auto everything automatically for you. Um. On this one, on the upper one, you see the butterfly valve is over there. It's not fully open on the top one. Yeah, that one? Yeah. Yeah, you should fully open that. No, no, butterfly, the hand one. That one over there. No. Can you point it up? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it should, should be open for it. This is a, a valve to, to isolate your boiler water. So if you ever needed to uh, pull the coil out, you'll be able to isolate it. Shut this valve off and you shut this off. They just use two different kinds of valves. This is a metallic valve. They're both, they're both are. They have little okay, pressure what's gauges the too. What's the procedure to taking that? Don't think we so, ever do that, but... Yeah, so, so you would have to drain the whole tank down first. Okay. Isolate the tank itself. Isolate the boiler water. Disconnect this by these four bolts and this four bolts. Mm -hmm. And then taking it out, you see all these bolts right here? You would take all these off mm -hmm. and coil slides out. There's uh, gaskets, there's like two different gaskets in there too. Yeah, it would just slide right out. But it has to be, look, we take it from here, but it's because it's connected for this part. Yeah, so oh, so in here so you would you would have to there should be a union. Somewhere. Somewhere. They might have covered it. Okay. Maybe not. I I I don't know. But yeah, you definitely need this there would have to be some type of union here. Yeah, to, to be able to slide it. And there's two gaskets in there that you would need to replace. And when, when you put it back, you need to torque it down to a certain amount of pounds. Any other questions? 